Welcome snooker fans all around the world. It's the final of the Riyadh season. World Masters of Snooker! Well, here we go. Best of nine frames, $250,000 and the title on the line. Showtime in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The reigning world champion and the world number one go head to head. This beige beckons the best in the tournament. So let's get them into the arena. Up first, let's hear it for the Rockets, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And his opponent is the Belgian bullet, Luca Brescia! Well, the final was pushed back an hour, but worth waiting for. Terrific atmosphere here in Riyadh this evening for the finale of this brand new event. Settle back and enjoy. The world champion against the world number one, Luca Brussel against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker. It's a best of nine affair. They're playing for a quarter of a million pounds. Big crowd in this evening to see who comes out with the trophy. Brussel was impressive earlier against Mark Allen. Ronnie O'Sullivan certainly was last night against John Higgins. More of a struggle against Judd Trump. He did make a century, though. He's made four in the eight frames he's won. We, of course, judge him to very high standards. But he's here. He starts favourite. Let's see how this final Thank develops. You. It's going to be uh, Luca Brussel to break. And the other question, will we see finally that 167 with the gold ball? Of course, Brussel beat O'Sullivan at the Crucible last year, quarterfinals of the World Championship. They played since the final of the Shanghai Masters. O'Sullivan won that one 11 9. That was back in September. It all ends here, Neil. Yes, it does. And it's a best of nine for a difference of 125,000. Quarter of a million all. That figure of 5,000 for the runner up. This probably is a valuable a best of nine as we've seen. So many ways to look at this match in that, um, you know, on today's form, you'd say Luca Brussel will win. He's miles better in his semi final against Mark Allen than Woody O'Sullivan was against Judd Trump. But of course, yesterday, different story. Brussel was okay, but O'Sullivan was scintillating. So it's just about what happens this evening. There's no real way of knowing who will win. But Luca is definitely playing better, as he pointed out in his interview. You know, the World Championship form is returning at long last. Three. Yeah, he looked good this afternoon. Mark Allen made two centuries in that match. Brussel made one, he won 4 2. But <laughs> promising opening has not come to much. Three. Biggest crowd of the week, as you, I guess, would expect for the final. Sort of occasion O'Sullivan usually responds to. I don't know if you can get through to pop this. That, uh, there's a part of the red sticking out. Maybe just enough to pot it. Just touch and go, I think. There you are. There's your answer. I don't think the O'Sullivan factor will be enough for him to win against Luca Brussel. I think you know, even Judd Trump has uh, started not to play well against Ronnie O'Sullivan. When at one point he almost had his beating for a period of time. I think if uh, Brazil plays well, then there's every chance he will defeat O'Sullivan. I don't think he's anyone that is a great uh, someone who fears reputations. Seven. And of course, a lot depends on how this man plays. Good queuing, well played. Look, 
looking for his fifth title of the season. They've all been big ones, haven't they? Obviously the UK and the Masters, the Shanghai Masters, where he beat Russell more recently, the World Grand Prix. I look back through the records, I reckon this is his 124th 15. professional final. And he's looking for his 79th title. 16. Well, he didn't quite stun into them as he'd usually do. The cue ball just gripped and went 20. backwards. Which is not really what you're looking for. Not for position. And he's not on an easy follow-up red. I expect him to play better in this match than the semi-final. It was actually, surprisingly, not a classic by any stretch earlier. Tonight is a different ball game, though. Brian Sullivan, 23. Yeah, of course, Brussel left it rather late at the Crucible. It was 10 6 down going to the last session, much longer match. In a best of nine, you're looking for a fast start. If you notice that the uh, golden ball has already disappeared from the table with the possibility of the 167, 147 plus the golden ball gone in frame one. Didn't go for that. He uh, just played safe from it. But it wasn't an intended pop. all because he hit it too thick and the cue ball doesn't make the journey back to bulk he was up very quickly on the shot Only looking at this red to middle blue is not in the way of the potting angle that's a, good shot there. That's a really good shot to hold for the black, as it intended. Nice cannon on the blue. And then with a chance to get this first frame under his belt. Eight. Yeah, as I said earlier, we, we sort of judge him to very high standards because we've seen high standards from him. We saw them last 16. night. He might not have been at his best earlier, but he still beat Trump pretty comfortably. Well, he's, he kind of said that he dragged. I'm sure about that. Had Judd played better, I suspect Ronnie would. But he was waiting for Trump to do something that really happened. And you just know... 24. He'll be focused for a final. As I said, he's played so many of them. 25. Brussel was in with an early chance. Will he get another one in this frame? You would think not. Thirty-two. If he does win the title of Sullivan, he'll set uh, a new record for most prize money won in a season. He'll go... Over 1.1 million, Judd Trump had held the previous record. And, of course, there's some big prizes left. World Open, Tour Championship, World Championship. Four. 
result. Well, already with a 60-point lead, and it doesn't appear that he's done very much in this frame. But what he has done, he's won it now, barring a snooker when this black is dropped. The next red following it will guarantee the first frame, I feel. <laughs> Coming to an area where we can now extend. So one more 14. red and there isn't any way back for Luca Brussel. Well, there's enough on for O'Sullivan to make what would be a fifth century of the tournament. As I say, it's only the ninth frame he would have won in this event. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. Of course, the other thing, how, how quickly he plays the shots. The average shot time is always around about 16 seconds. Sees the shot and plays it very quickly. An absolute natural it always has been. Seventy-two. Doesn't even appear to be playing quickly, like some 73. players rushing round. But when he gets to the shot, he, he threw it very soon afterwards. century happens this is very acute red to middle if he's looking at it into the left middle well he's already playing better you have to say than this afternoon which is ominous for his opponent the ton is still on what a start for the seven times world champion is he going to add Saudi Arabia to the long list of countries where he's won big titles. stays out but it's still a great start for Ronnie O'Sullivan here in the final of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker he leads Luca Brussel 1-0 well it's a uh, new ground for snooker coming here to Saudi Arabia Boulevard City for the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker and inside Already the action is compelling. A 95 break from Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's best of nine, first to five, an interval after four. Luca Brassell did have the early chance, didn't he? He missed that red. Really get another look in. Be nice to think someone at some point would be on for the uh, the golden ball maximum, but obviously it's a, it's a big, big match in its own right. There's another long red flies in from Brussel. We're not going to see it in this frame. Yeah, very good long red. Good job.
Gilbert went in because the cable didn't go very far. Off comes the golden ball. Cable comes around nicely. This is a good chance that he's created here, so he's going to be in this final with a chance, of which he seems to have. He's got to do something at this point. Seven. I think people forget, because he not only is he world champion, he's the youngest player in the top 16, the only player below 30 years of age. It is birthday, 29th, coming up in a couple of days. But, uh, you know, in general, the top flight of players are 30 something, 12. 40 something, like this man, Blake Bortis. Stayed <laughs> down, but it was always going to drop. Yeah, that's okay. He's got slightly awkward queuing, but the right next red is quite easy. Twenty six. <clears throat> He's got to do 27. heavy hitting, hasn't he? That's what he did in that final session against O'Sullivan at the Crucible. A remarkable spell. Seven frame spell where he just didn't miss. I think that's okay. At first, it looked like he might have the bunch, but the red to right middle appears to be on. Quite season four, and there's no getting away from that. So, worry to win tonight. What a boost that would be! What an injection of confidence ahead of the world title defence he's got coming up in just over a month's time, and also to win a new event, a big money event as well. Let's not get away from that either. 40. Just would be massive for him. 41. as if he might be a nod on a ball here. 48. Of a pity. I mean, it's a good contribution, but at this level, you make a mistake and it doesn't count for very many. 48 at the outset of a frame. So he's going to go up the table. Push the red on the cushion or near it. Look at yourself, 48. Decent, but not very many. 49. What a shot that was. That was uh, quite an acute angle to middle, but he hit it with a lot of pace in there. The accuracy you need on that shot is quite something. It seemed to me that uh, Luca didn't mind all that much leaving it. Kick. Keeble definitely jumped there. Slowed it down in pace. See it again. There's a jump. Yeah, not the best contact we've seen. So I think the break's over before it really ever got going. Oh, dearie me, that's a, that's a very slapdash safety shot from O'Sullivan. 
Well, it's uh, very much out of character. Kubel just crashing into the Reds. When there's a lot of things he could have done to avoid that. chance in the frame then for Brussel. A little look sideways glance as if he wasn't Eight. on one. But I think he might just be on that. Place to run it round two cushions. He'd probably throw it a little wider. Anyway, Nine. didn't have to do that. He was clearly on it. So now the second attempt he really needs to convert this to avoid any fight backs in the frame from the rocket yeah it's his birthday as you say in two days it was a bit of an early present they've given here but the shot O'Sullivan played to set him up mm, well again not 16. certainty I think he tried to get the cue ball across further to play the red into the left middle. Tough shot. Luca Brissell, played it quite 16. cannily though. He only wanted the red and he was not leaving anything on the shot. two of the worst safety shots I think I've seen him play in about 10 years there played them both in succession the first one really was poor that was not a lot one. better and he's absolutely gifted the frame this time closeness of this final will make it even more interesting it might have been a school of thought that O'Sullivan would, would run away with it but I think Luca's playing a bit better than that Eight. yes just listening to him speak I think he's feeling the best he's felt actually since the world championship it's not been a productive season but he feels his form's coming Nine. back he's enjoying himself again and this is a big occasion this is why you play snooker for nights like this we know how inspired he can get. We've seen it. Ronnie O'Sullivan has seen it firsthand. 14. The other thing is they're two very quick players. I mentioned O'Sullivan, 15. but Luca is not a lot slower in pace. I mean, I expect these frames to rattle along. Just contrast his mood here with at the Masters. Rachel Casey asked him, didn't she, before he played Jack Lazowski? Are you looking forward to it? He said, 22. not really. <laughs> but thankfully, that's in the past. 22. He is looking forward to playing now, and he's playing some good stuff here. OK, he's been set up a couple of times. Going off the back of certainly the match earlier in Mark Allen. He must fancy his chances. I'm just not sure he'd been putting in the hard yards, which you need to do uh, either side of Christmas. You know, he hadn't. I think he was enjoying... Everything that went with being world champion, why shouldn't he? But I think now he's realised he's got to knuckle down, roll his sleeves up, get on with it. And now he looks a different player again. 38. <laughs> Had a lovely player to watch still. <laughs> His big hand barely touched the table there. He just hit it so quickly. It's game on here in Riyadh. Luca Brussel levels the final. This is promising to be a mini classic tonight. It's only best of nine, but every moment is fascinating. Brussel levels up at one each.
Boulevard City is where the action is taking place this week in the Riyadh season. World Masters of Snooker, a brand new invitation event, and we're down to the final between the world champion Luca Brussel and the world number one, and of course the seven times world champion Ronnie O'Sullivan. And it's one frame each, best of nine. Big crowd in, and the action so far has been very interesting. O'Sullivan 95 in the first, Brussel in the end dominated the second. Shout out as well to uh, Jan Bahas and Tatiana Wollaston, who have uh, refereed and marked all the matches. Had to cope with the uh, the golden ball and all the rest of it. And as ever, have done a very professional job. In fact, Jan Bahas, uh, he put a picture up earlier was out sort of shopping and uh, bumped into Tyson Fury. Two heavyweights together. <laughs> Playing thick off the bunch. This time it's absolutely fine. He tends to hammer into the bunch of reds at Brussel, which can lead to problems, but that was a perfectly good shot. I don't know if you'll try and pop this one and hold put the black into the same pocket. The shot is on, but like probably to hit it with a bit more pace. One. Oh, yeah, played it. That's a few ball in the side, pushing him near it. So he did play it, almost drag it in. hold for the red he's going to play it quite slowly at least if he plays it slowly he could block the pocket but it doesn't drop in he's got to drop this in it's a lovely shot really good very missable The fact that it's still on the table suggests we can't avoid it. He's only ever made one maximum break, Luca Purcell. So it takes something to believe 17. he could, in all the frames he's played, perform his second one here on a night like this. And then the, the ball that follows it, of course, which we, I guess we, uh, well, I've spoken about a lot. Yeah, that maximum was a championship league. There was no audience and no prize money for it. This is a slightly different affair, but it, it's also a massive match. So. OK, he's on blacks for now. Yes, and I think while you're playing on reds to middle, you've always got the chance to hold for the black, although he isn't quite as straight. Really, the shot is not to play on the black here, unless you, you're thinking that way. Play out for blue or pink, I think. It's a shot. 25. So the disappearance of the golden ball is about to take place. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, when it was announced, I think a lot of people were kind of wondering exactly, well, firstly, is it a good idea? Third. Would it work? Where would it go? How would it work? But I think it's worked really well because now it's gone and now it's just a normal frame. The carrot is dangled in the background. Obviously, it's up to the players how they go about a frame. 31. Brussel targeting the title first, clearly. Yes, and maximums happen when they happen. I mean, I think you can't really force them. Now if the balls go accordingly, we had one in the Championship League last week, the 200th, but they do happen sporadically. You can't really go into it thinking you're going to make one until you get quite deeply into the break. Anyway, for now, this pink, it's a question for Tatiana Wollaston to, does it go on its spot or somewhere in below?
37. Forty-five. Forty-six. There's more evidence that he's playing well. I don't want to put the curse on him when he's in. Because he's still got work to do yet to get this frame on. But he's done the early groundwork. Okay, I think he calculated that anywhere down there, that whatever kiss he got on that red, he would be on one of them. Fifty-four. Yeah, beginning to serve it up to O'Sullivan now. A little shaky in frame one. No one doubts his temperament and his ability. To take any player down when he's playing well. I think we know that now. 59. Didn't already. 60. It's no doubt that Sullivan has an intimidation factor. And we've seen a lot of players who play well in matches and then struggle against him. Played on the bottom left red and has gone too 67. far, but he's always got the red to middle to back it up. And this red will be the one that wins the frame barring snookers. But there's more to come anyway, so this is excellent from Bussell. It really is, it's good stuff. It's what you've got to do against that man. You've got to take it to him. And Ronnie likes to dictate the terms, and he's done it for over 30 years, but Bussell is capable of the very 73. same thing. Yeah, and we heard the great roar when he knocked that blue in at the end of the last frame. Obviously, the frame was well and truly won. You know, he, he, he's quite good at getting people on his side as well because that's such an enjoyable way of playing. 74. Yeah, the break might end there. I don't know how you can not like Luca as a person, as a player. I think he's great for the game. This next pot is going to be quite special if he can make it, but he's done more than enough. It didn't last long that frame, did it? 81 from Brussel in the blink of an eye, and the world champion hits the front. He is taking the game to Ronnie O'Sullivan. He leads 2-1. The final night of the Riyadh Season World Masters of snooker here in Saudi Arabia. Brand new destination for the sport, of course. There'll be a world ranking event here next season. But right now, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan against Luca Brussel, and Brussel leads 2-1. We've had an 81 there in the blink of an eye. So we've got one more frame before the mid-session interval. Thank you, frame four. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. He can do with the golden ball after this shot anyway because he's not taking the black but you can't play it as a if you like a Green seventh ball. color Luca Brissell one well more than one I didn't want that in there four that's well, coming away because uh, <laughs> 
a little confusing, all of it, but... It's funny, isn't it, because he would have been hampered by the golden ball there, but it does have to come off the table because there's no maximum on. Oh. Well, they're all going in now. Well, in the end, the uh, flute green that he didn't want didn't cause him any bother. I tell you what, if that yellow had gone in as well, then you might as well give him the trophy. He needs to just simmer down a tiny bit because. Uh, <laughs> Yes, he's playing well and he's, the adrenaline is pumping. He's a massive ma game of snooker, this, but uh, that was quite an ambitious shot, has to be said. And he has a, a real chance here to strike. He's got another frame. He could win this frame and take a 3 1 lead. And he's just, not saying he's got to change his game, but not take on ridiculous shots. He's better than that. Pink <laughs> okay, was in play, but he just got the red first. I mean, he's not boxing, but he's kind of got O'Sullivan on the ropes a little bit, hasn't he? Just the way that he won those two previous frames. Well, maybe seeing Eddie Hearn sat in the front row, he thinks it is boxing. Because he's promoting the Anthony Joshua fight here at the weekend. Oh, goodness me, that is a dreadful shot again. I mean, far be it for me to criticise O'Sullivan. I think he's the greatest of all time, but he's played three or four really diabolical safety shots by his standards. He's feeding Brussel new chances all over the place. He's so out of character. So dangerous when he's in good form, his long game, and you, you know, you've got to find a way. Even on Sullivan, Eight. he can play the best safety of anybody when he wants to. At the moment, you've got to find a way of stopping no. Brussel because he's all over him. Certainly fancy a serious opportunity 16. here at Brussel this evening. But he has to focus. And as you say, keep calm as well. That's so important in this sport. Not get ahead of yourself, get overexcited. Seventeen. Build up to the World Championship. The narrative has been sort of shifting, hasn't it? There was a time a few weeks ago where everyone was saying it's O'Sullivan or Trump. Then suddenly Ronnie got whitewashed by Selby. He came into the picture. Mark Allen's winning tournaments. Gary Wilson, Jean Gander. If Brussel can win this one tonight, then he's very much in the picture as well. No, I think when it's called healthy, isn't it? Healthy competition, which uh, players' form comes and goes. It, you can't just keep performing like a machine and knocking everything in. 24. And there's too many good players around for them all to be out of form for long. I actually thought Sean Murphy played well in defeat. He might come to life for the World Championships as well. And there's the mistake. And then he has to take full advantage. The mistake has happened. First one for a while of any real significance. Could be a big one, couldn't it? Because he's opening reds up as well. So he's now handed O'Sullivan the opening. One. Well, it's a big visit for even someone who's has achieved as much as O'Sullivan. For him, this is a very important visit to the table. Eight. 
nine. Seventeen. Looking at the two reds close together, you can see on the left of shot there to see if either will pop. They might come into play. Sullivan will need at least one of them. Twenty-five. Whatever else he takes before that. So still the two reds where they have been for the duration of this break. And now he's looking again. Where will he the pot? Certainly something will go to the right middle. The top one might be potable to left corner, but that could be the winning or losing of this frame. For now he's playing on the other red, so it's going to be, I think, crunch time soon. They just set up close together and quite awkwardly. And they might be able to nudge the cannon, but even that wouldn't guarantee position. Not in this pink, just brush into them. Yes, that's absolutely delightful. That is delightful. Left hand red 52. might have covered the black to that same pocket as the pink went in. That's what he just looked at. Fifty three. Also ensure he doesn't over screw here and not be able to pop the red because of the black. Seems unlikely that he would do that with his superb cubal control. Red 59. will be enough. The colour will be just a bonus. He's noticeably kind of slowed down a little bit in this break, understanding the importance of it. Big error from that man. He was on top, wasn't he? He was playing good stuff. He missed a black, opening the reds up. Handed the opening to O'Sullivan and he's taken it so a fascinating final 67. he's going to be all square at the interval O'Sullivan was a bit sort of muted wasn't he for a while but it's come back to life here 69. I don't think he's missed many he just said his, his safety play was really poor by his very high standards 72 well it's turning into the final I think the crowd here wanted to see very entertaining and very close it's going to be a 15-minute interval, and then it'll be the fight to the finish. Brussel has found out that you cannot afford unforced errors against the greatest, because he will punish you.
Sets it up nicely, doesn't it, for the second half of this final here in Riyadh. Ronnie O'Sullivan punished fully the 94 clearance off the back of the Miss Black from Luca Brussel. It's been high quality stuff, very entertaining, and at the interval, they're all square at 2 2. Thank you very much, Michael. Let's get this final back underway here at the Riyadh season, World Masters of Snooker. Let's get our players to the table. Up first, please welcome the world number one. Let's hear it for the Rockets, Ronnie O'Sullivan. And welcome back, the reigning champion of the world, the Belgian bullet, Luca Brussel. Well, it was a very entertaining start to the night, and I'm sure it'll be a fascinating finish. All square 2 2, best of nine for the title. Brussel had the chance for 3 1, but he needs to forget about that. Just look ahead to the rest of the evening. Thank you. Frame five. Luca Brussel to play. O'Sullivan made 95 in frame one. Brussel dominated frame two, made 81 in frame three. Missed that black going into the reds in frame four. O'Sullivan made 94. And we restart after the interval all square. Clean shot on the red. Now he wants the keyboard to hold up so he can get onto a colour, and it has. A nice shot, this sort of shot that Luca Brussel knocks in all of the time. <coughs> Been scooping all the big prizes, is see now Sullivan, hasn't he? All around the world. Not only, of course, two triple crown events, but in Shanghai, came back to the UK and won Five. World Grand Prix. He's had an incredible season. So he knows exactly what is required. I think he knows he's going to have to step up on what he's played today if he's going to go and win this against Luca. Six. I think last night's form might be sufficient because he was played beautifully against John Higgins, but earlier on against Judd Trump it wasn't quite like that. In fact, far from it. He got the job done, but helped by Judd's not playing anywhere near his game. Does that red go at the bottom of the bungee, looking at it into the same pocket as the black? Well, so many of the people here, I'm sure, are seeing live snooker for the first time. What a match. What a couple of players there. They're watching here. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 48 years of age, remember. On this day in 1983, Ray Reardon won a tournament at the age of 50. The oldest winner of a major event. Surely this man, in a couple of years' time, is going to break that record. Into the reds we go. Couldn't have played it any better because the pink is way above the bunch, but he 19. thrashed the pink into the reds and he's on one. Twenty. It was a really good split, you know. I mean, it may not have got a rapturous applause, but that was the kind of split which would go wrong very often. Yes, I mean, he still plays a young man's game, doesn't he? We saw the average shot times in the interval. They're 15 seconds each <laughs> so far tonight. Play 
playing with right hand side. He wants to be down on the red by the black that's half covering the, the black spot. That's the red of choice, just to tidy things up around that part of the table. I'd like to have been a bit straighter on it. 27. Played it well. But there's quite a bit of work to do here. That bunch of half a dozen reds tightly packed. And that's the problem, you see. The reds were so close up. It didn't leave a lot of room for manoeuvre with the cue ball. He, I'm not sure he's on one here. Maybe a difficult one to the middle, and it really is difficult from that view we've just seen of it. I mean, this could easily be missed. Well, I mean, it's an incredible shot. He made it look easy, but it wasn't. Entirely sure about that black as to whether it was going to drop. 42. 43. So Brissell was on top at 2 1. He was in in frame four. He missed a black gun into the reds. O'Sullivan made 94. The momentum has definitely shifted back to the seven times world champion. 50. Looking tonight to win his 79th professional title. 51. Remember when Steve Davis beat him in the Masters final, 97, and it was sort of painted as a win for this veteran, you know, coming back. Almost like coming back from nowhere. Steve was 39. <laughs> Ronnie's 48. Sixty-four. Sixty-five. So again, in no time at all, we're at frame ball. For a 3-2 lead for O'Sullivan. What a masterful break this has been. It really has, actually. I mean, it just didn't seem like there was that many on when he came to the table. I know we've said that before. But it was a very skillful breaking open of the bunch. And the red to middle, queuing awkwardly, was another gem of a shot. percent pot success. Well, he's raised his game, hasn't he? And he needed to, I think, from what we saw earlier. <laughs> if he went past the pink, that's the question. Little grimace, he mightn't be on it comfortably, if at all. Maybe it will go off the right jaw. And he's going for the other one instead. You mentioned that's 39, Steve Davis. Chris. We've got nine players in the top 16, over 40 at the moment. So the game has certainly changed since then. Yeah, the thing is, at that time, late 90s, so many of the top players were in their 20s. Now, 91. so many are in the 40s. The same people. <laughs> They're the Ronnies, the Johns, the Mark Williamses. Nice. Just an extraordinary record of longevity. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to be an experienced player, but that isn't always enough. You've still got to have the game, the coordination, the technique that you had Nine all those years before. Here we go, then, for the century. 100. O'Sullivan back on top in the final, in style. Look at the faces there. Absolute delight at what they're watching. Just flick the yellow. No matter. 
Well, I'm glad this hit finally is not a best of seven. I'm glad it's a best of nine because it, you're going to be left want, wanting more, aren't you? Whatever duration it's over. And, uh, best of nine feels at least a little bit more fitting of such an occasion, such a prize fund, such an audience. A sigh <laughs> that he doesn't make the total clearance. 121 will have to do. Ronnie O'Sullivan's fifth century of the tournament. He leads the final 3 2. To the arena. In fact, they've just come back. So the referee Tatiana Wollaston spoke to them and they left, but they've just returned. So maybe the scoreboard, possibly something like that. But anyway, it looks like as they've returned, we're ready to restart very shortly because it is quite late here, it's actually uh, because they're three hours ahead of British time, so it's actually 20 to 1 in the morning. But the final didn't start till 11 o'clock, it's been a quick affair, the frames haven't been long. Thank you. Here we go, frame, frame six. six of a possible Mario nine. Yes, and uh, now Luca Brussella has got to do what William O'Sullivan did. If a mistake does come, and of course O'Sullivan is playing well now, but you know, Luca has got to capitalise. He's got to be ready, switched on for it. A terrific game so far. What? I think the problem Luca's got is O'Sullivan seems to be um, as well as ever now. He's completely switched on to the job at hand. It's a terrific red. Well, he's got into the bunch once already. This time not interested in playing it because there are reds out and he's on one. Of course at some point he'll have to get into the pack, but not yet. Six. I think this is the moment, especially with the one red out, you can use that one as a likely next red and split the bunch and see how that goes. And there's an example of how to get the bunch open with a red in play, not wait until there aren't any reds in play. 14. This gives you extra options, extra positional options. There's never been a better break builder than this man. 15. Strange, what has changed in this match is when Luca got to the front, there was a, a real adrenaline rush that he was 20. on. And one or two shots became um, a little too much for him. Just one or two, but O'Sullivan has just a little bit of calm to proceedings. 23. He seems as in concentration as I've seen him for a while here. Well, 
there's the mistake that I was speaking 29. about that Luca uh, going to have to prey on. I didn't see that one coming. He was looking very good. He looked up at the crowd as if something might have distracted him slightly, but that's just the way it is. It's not an easy starter for Luca, though. Very much in this match, Brussel. He's playing as well as I've seen him since he won the world title. But this is a tough opening red. Yeah, you could see from the side on view actually how far this red is away from the pocket. It's foreshortened on that angle. And he's easy. Yes, and he's a good rest player, but um, he might be one of the very best players in the world, Brussel, using the rest. He's good enough. One. Cue ball just trickling into a position behind the blue, which he was looking for when we last saw it. This short of that. So, again, it's a task to get from colour to red here. Obviously, some movement in his eye line that he's still? not happy about. Thank you. Giving them a bit of a look. A bit of a look. <laughs> that was uh, a very stern look at whoever it was. <laughs> the only shot he has is to leave this plant, and he's right behind this, so it does make it an easier shot when you're Six. sort of square onto it like this. Walls have still got a little bit of distance between them, though. Getting further and further out of position in this break now. Now, has he got the shot off the blue to run round of two cushions and open the bunch? I don't think that, that shot is there. The green looks to be in the way. So he play the green, perhaps on the bottom red by the black. And if O'Sullivan is struggling to see a shot, probably isn't a shot. That gets him round the table. I think he's, the problem he's got, he plays the blue, it looks either in off or that little gap between the green and the cushion, which I find it very hard to locate. It's a good shot though, isn't it, on the loose thread. There's an angle on his next colour, almost certainly the black. Which will be the key to the frame, I would say. Eleven. I don't know if he's straight enough. I don't think he can go into these. Oh, he could only play it really slowly. He wanted to play it with more pace, but he was swung wide, so he just nipped it and got Eight. into them, but not very many reds move for that reason. Nineteen. So this is uh, another shot that's... Uh, important either he plays on the bottom red or he goes blue into the pink and gets the reds open that the target is not wide so maybe on the loose red and already he's chalked up a lead of 53 points he's not really been on the ball yet 
Well, that might just be an absolutely 32. sensational positional shot if he's on that red because he really didn't have a lot of room. I think that is exactly where he had to finish. It's a beautiful shot he's played there. Well, the pink will do. It'll be 68 in front, 67 on. We saw him sort of squinting at the scoreboard in the heavens there, but this is the ball that leaves Purcell needing a snooker. Certainly not a conventional break, but he kept it going. His focus. It's, we saw when the 39. person was in his eye line how annoyed he was. You know, all this stuff about I'm here to have some fun. He's here to win. Of course he is. I can think of many a tour player who wouldn't have tried to go into the bunch there in knocking that pink in because it's a snooker needed, and that might be the one chance of losing the frame, miss the pink, and open the reds. Yeah, you're right. It's been a really difficult break, Thanks, but this has been a gem of a break, actually, in the context of this match. So it looks like 4-2, and <laughs> even though it's only a two-frame lead, it feels like a long way back for Bussell just because of how well O'Sullivan's playing here. Missed that one, so half chances, three snookers needed, but in fact he's staying in his seat. The match has turned really on that Miss Black in frame four, you've got to say, from Bussell. He was 2-1 up at that point, but O'Sullivan now leads 4-2, and he's just one away from becoming the first ever winner of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker. Boulevard City in Riyadh has been playing host to the first professional snooker tournament in Saudi Arabia. The Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. This is the final night, and perhaps we're in the final throws now because Ronnie O'Sullivan leads Luca Brussel 4 2. Playing really good stuff, actually. Brussel is capable of similar. He showed it earlier on in the match, but he needs to produce it now. These are the stats O'Sullivan at 96% pot success. And that for shot times 15 seconds and 16 seconds. There's no shot clock here, by the way. It's not the shootout, but. They've really got on with it. It's been entertaining stuff, very much like their Shanghai Masters final, actually. That was a longer match. This is a sprint, and O'Sullivan can see the winning line. You can't rule out a comeback from Luca Vassell, but it's almost that you'd have to see Ronnie O'Sullivan's form dip a little bit, and he seems to have a bit between his teeth right now. Very interesting, and uh, there is something to... Uh, to say, look at that prize money, and I wonder if there's been some nervy moments from the players. It's a short form of the game for a big prize fund. The two things don't always go together. Well, if O'Sullivan does win the 250,000, he'll set a new record for most prize money won in a season. And the season's not over, is it? We've got, you know, a lot of big prizes, not least half a million at the Crucible at the World Championship to play for. Runner up 125, and there's that carrot dangling the half a million. For anyone who made the super maximum, the 167 with the golden ball, that's £395,000. I think there might be a slight issue with the scoreboard, which possibly is delaying this next frame, which is unfortunate to say the least, because not much else is delaying this final, that these two are really getting on with it. But uh, hopefully soon we can get underway with frame seven. Yes, and of course you want to stay in the bubble of concentration. You don't really want to be distracted by anything. But the play is not as continuous as it might be. Here are the high breaks. So Sullivan's made five centuries, and you know he's only played. This is only his third short match. Ding with the 138 highest. Of course, it's not actually a high break prize, but a lot of centuries we've had 15 in the tournament. You kind of expect it. They're the best in the world, but. It's hard to sum them up. Sean Murphy and Ding, they, they both made two each in matches they lost, as, as did Mark Allen earlier, actually, against Luca Brussel. It's 
still time for more. Brussel would love a couple, wouldn't he, to try and force a decider. Yes, we've not seen the, the 147 with the 20 points at 167, but you know what? 147s happen when they happen, don't they? There's been 200 in the history of professional snooker, official ones. And there's been a lot of frames in professional snooker. And uh, there will be a, an instance, if this is an ongoing thing, there will be one, or there'll be certainly the golden ball might come into play. But you can't just dream up these 147s. Well, the, uh, the local dignitaries are arriving. I think the promoter is here. Taking their seats to uh, watch the rest of the final. Seven. Luca to break. So, frame seven of the final. Luca Brussel trailing 4 2. O'Sullivan one away from the title. Isn't he? he managed to pop one directly after the mid-session interval at two each, which put him on the right track. And of course, with O'Sullivan, there's so many different ways he can win frames. He's a brilliant break builder. He can make difficult breaks, as we've seen in the previous frame. His long game can be good. I might have to put another long one to keep this alive from here as the Golden ball Three. is whisked away from the table. I mean, he is the complete Mario player. Sullivan, three. Because actually, a lot of the safety he learned off of Ray Reardon, perhaps, and at times he can play that as well as anybody. I think with Sullivan, you've just got to find a way of just being better than him on the day at everything. He did one ball to get the snooker behind. That was the yellow, and he's done it. Sullivan, Didn't really threaten any of the reds there. And the red to middle is no use to him because he's, the black is not available either. So Brussel will have to make a better fist of this escape. It's awkward because there's a two or three reds away from the bunch. He'd love to roll into the bottom of the pack, but he can't quite get there. On you. Thank you. So not easy, this. I'm not sure though which red he's trying to hit. The red by the black. It's a dangerous red to be hitting. It opens the black up. And the black is available into that right corner. something of a shot to nothing it's hard to think how he could have left anything there except for the way he was playing and that was always going to drift away from the pocket from that angle 
this plant is extremely difficult. I said earlier on, if you're straight behind the first red in line with the pocket, they're more manageable as the one O'Sullivan played, but this is a wretched shot to have to play. But he's just looking for a way in because he's not been in for a while. He's looking at another plant now, I think. I just feel there was an element of desperation about that and so many reds moved. He was desperate to find a way in. And, uh, didn't really look on, I have to say. Well, Luca Purcell is going to sit down. The question is, does he get back up again while the final's live? He rolled the dice, it didn't work. It's kind of how he plays, though, isn't it? And you can't really criticise him because he dazzled us at the World Championships, but it did seem a bit... an unlikely pot, and every red seemed to move. And they've all gone into open spaces. One. That's a pretty special atmosphere in here tonight. He's actually finished in a slightly awkward place to get onto his next red because he's straight on this green with the extension. I don't think the two reds in bulk are very potable. He may have to play a deep screw with all this equipment on the queue down towards all the action at this end. It's, it's not that easy a shot. You're in the sort of miscue territory here if you're not careful. Really a shot to associate with O'Sullivan. It must be on something, surely. He got so much action into the cue ball, didn't he? He was a long way from the cue ball where he played the shot. Four. Well, you've got a view that he's on the red to middle. He doesn't really like the shot very much, so he's playing this red through the gap. Five. Wow, he's got the most amazing chance to get the match one here. Because uh, his eyes must have lit up when Luca played the shot he did. Just look at this table. Chance to break Ten. yet more new ground. First winner of a tournament in Saudi Arabia. He would set a record for most prize money in a single season. It's hard to think how he could have had a 11. better season, Dave, isn't it, when you think about it? Not least Shanghai Masters, which he seems to own that event. He wins it every year. World Grand Prix, which is a terrific event, but the two first two majors he's won those as well so this would be the icing on the cake 18. he's actually managed things superbly hasn't he in terms of his schedule 90. he's battled at times this season when his form hasn't been there and then when it comes out as we saw against john higgins last night we've seen it tonight he's still the best simple as that yes it's his best ever season coming into the world championships anyway 26. Has to be. And it might just be getting better in the next few minutes. Twenty-seven. Thirty-four. That's enough in the middle of the table here, not to worry about any reds up at the other end of the table, which are tied up a bit. That becomes Brussels' problem, not O'Sullivan's. Thirty-eight. 
35. Oh, that's just a slight error, finishing low. I'm not suggesting you'll miss this, but he wasn't meant to finish there. No problem at all. Beautiful touch on the red. 42. 43. Well, at two on down, he was put under a lot of pressure. Luca Purcell had Ronnie O'Sullivan on the ropes, but he's 50. played four exceptional frames from that point onwards. 51. Yeah, he really has. Once again, he's risen to the occasion, and it's some occasion here in Riyadh. Big money tournament in a new destination for snooker, but a very familiar winner. 58. Assuming 59. he closes this out now, and he just needs this pink to do exactly that. He might not have potted the golden ball, but he's produced some golden form this season. In the campaign for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, he'll do well to make the century. I don't suppose it means that much to him, but he would quite like to put on a show at the end of this match. <laughs> no, no, that was uh, not as played, but it doesn't make any difference. He's been uh, just demonstrating why he's the greatest of all time here this week, and he Nine. still holds a position at the top of the rankings. And uh, he's probably still the very best player in the world right now. It's hard to think that he couldn't be, given what he's been doing this season. Sensational. 92. And this is just a further example of it this evening's final. 93. Set for a grandstand finish with another century. He would have won in this tournament 13 frames and made six century breaks. 97. Luca 99. Purcell has shown some great form this week, but this man right now too hot to handle. The green to finish with a century. There's the cheer from the crowd. Who have loved... This display, I'm sure many would like to have seen it go closer, but... 106. It's been the story of the season in many ways. When Ronnie O'Sullivan turns up, he's ready to win. And he's won another one, a big one here in Riyadh. 111. It's a grandstand finish. Ronnie O'Sullivan wins the first staging of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker with a dazzling display. Luca Brussel missed a black leading 2-1 and O'Sullivan did the rest. Two centuries in the final. It's Brussel leading the applause. They're on their feet here in Saudi Arabia as snooker breaks new ground. It's a very familiar winner. Ronnie O'Sullivan with his 79th professional title and a first prize of a quarter of a million pounds. He's beaten Luca Brussel here in Riyadh by five frames to two.
We will have, of course, shortly the presentations and I'm sure interviews as well. Here's Tahir. Brothers and sisters, a big round of applause, please, for Luca Brassell and Ronnie O'Sullivan. Well, it's now time for the official trophy presentation of the Riyadh season, World Masters of Snooker. So please welcome your official trophy presentation party, His Excellency, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority, Turkey Alashik, and the Chairman of Matchroom Sports, Eddie Han. The World Snooker Tour, its players, officials and fans would like to humbly express their gratitude and appreciation to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His, His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. And His Excellency, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority, Turkey Al Ashik. Well, what a fantastic few days we've had here. Hasn't it been wonderful? Thank you. What a few days of the Riyadh season. Well, Master of Snooker. Luke, if I could just, if you just come here for a few minutes. The current world champion. It wasn't to be tonight, but how much have you enjoyed these last few days? Yeah, a lot. I mean, um, just a fantastic few days. I uh, really enjoyed playing. The, the venue is amazing, and I think I never really say this normally, but the crowd have been fantastic this and, and ever since I landed here in Saudi, I feel like the people are really, really nice. And again, I never really said it in my interviews, but that's something I really noticed. And yeah, just grateful to be able to play here. And I think... And I, I think you speak for all the players, don't you, about that, how welcome you've all been made to feel, haven't you? Yeah, 100%, and everyone was excited to come here, so um, yeah, just uh, fantastic to have this tournament on the calendar now, and just looking forward to the next one, and hopefully he's going to be here for a long time. And this man is a world champion, he'll be defending his world title next month. Many congratulations, we'll see you very soon. Luca Bresci, everyone! And now, can I introduce the champion? the greatest, Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's been a really good few days, isn't it? Yeah, I just, just want to echo what Lucas said. It's been a, a fantastic tournament, brilliant venue. The crowd have been amazing, you know. It's, it's been a long time since we came to the Middle East. I think like 1994, so it's far too long. So to have snooker back in the Middle East, um, we've been treated so fantastically well this week. You know, all the players have enjoyed it. The, uh, the hospitality has been fantastic. The culture here is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, we just would be so grateful to come back here and play many, many more times. You know, it's been a, a, a fantastic tournament. And you have the absolute right to pick and choose your tournaments. You'll be back here, won't you? Hopefully, yeah, absolutely. You know, like, these are the... These are the uh... <laughs> These are the tournaments you really want to play in, you know, one table, great crowd, great atmosphere. I mean, the music was going in between the frames. It was, it was, like, it was in, <laughs> like, like we was in some sort of rave, you know? <laughs> it was like it's going 25 years back, in, you know, when I, when I was young. But, you know, it, I, th I think the whole... It's made it... It's made it, um, it's made it a, bit, a bit more lively, you know, outside enjoying themselves and it just feels like a really nice festival and you know Riyadh season for sport you know you've got the boxing on Saturday you've got the Formula One so everyone wants to get to Saudi <laughs> and, and, it's, <laughs> and it's great for this sport it's important you can't stand still can you at any stage for this sport to grow no exactly you know um, you know you want to kind of make the sport as big as you can make it but obviously you know coming to places like this you know, this, the, you know, the sellers are, are a powerhouse, you know, so um, if anyone can inject, inject something into snooker, it'll be the people that have put on the tournament this week. So hopefully they've enjoyed it, the crowds have enjoyed it. Um, we've, we've, we've certainly enjoyed it, so should be a 10-year ten, ten contract on the table by tomorrow. <laughs>
and, and you've done and won everything. And maybe next year when we're back, the golden ball. Golden ball, yeah. Yeah, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll get there next year. I'll just, uh, you, can't, just don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to take it all at once, you know. Just <laughs> the, the, tournament, the tournament this year, and then the golden ball next year. It'd be great. Do you want Ronnie back? Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, absolute pleasure to be speaking to you. Many congratulations, Ronnie O'Sullivan, everybody. It is time to hand out the trophies. Up first, your runner-up, the winner of £125,000 and the runners-up trophy. Please give it up, make some noise for the Belgian bullet, Luca Brasil! <laughs> One more time, let's hear it for Luca Brassel. You're one of And now to collect his £250,000 and the first ever Riyadh Season World Master of Snooker, it's the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan! Excuse me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Today, no, in this competition, no one has the golden ball. For that, for the next competition, we will double it for one million. <laughs> And second thing, and second thing, in Saudi Arabia, we honor to discuss with Sullivan to have an academy by his name in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Well, <laughs> where do we <laughs> It's very rare I'm speechless, but quite a fitting ending. So we didn't achieve the 167, but it does sound like we will be back. I think they all want these players back, don't they? And he's double the prize, has it? Um, His think, Excellency. Yeah, I think that just goes to show, you know, it's been such a fantastic few days here. And His Excellency's leaving now. Yeah. Yeah, it's just incredible, isn't it? For the tournament, you know, for all the players that'll come back for next year. For Ronnie O'Sullivan as well, you know, to be recognised and maybe have an academy here in Riyadh. It's just been a perfect end to a perfect week for players yeah. and for the snooker tour as well. well outside Boulevard City, so many children running to have photos for yourselves, the players. I mean, isn't that good for the sport? Absolutely. You know, and all the, all the crowd that gathered outside was just magnificent. You know, they love their sport here. It's great to play this inaugural tournament here. We're going to have a big, huge ranking tournament at the end of August, beginning of September, and hopefully many, many more tournaments over the years and years to come. Uh, it's like playing poker, Ron, isn't it, when you have, a, when you have an interview with him. But look, 
that meant a lot to him, didn't it? Yeah, you could see he was really relieved. Um, you know, he, we said it at the start of the week, he wants to win the tournaments, he wants to be the main man, you know, and prove to everyone in the, the new destinations that we're playing at who the best player in the world is, and he's done that again this week. You know, he just, again, turned it on at the end, played absolutely fantastic when he needed to, and, yeah, showed everyone he, he's still the best player in the world. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and he's got a new, new set of fans. I think Ron's going to be quite busy tonight. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, I, I think he's going to miss our, uh, he's going to miss our coach back to the hotel. I feel sorry for him. Uh, I think he'd be okay. I yeah. think he could get an Uber. Yeah, look at that <laughs> selfie city. Yeah. Look, at that. <laughs> look at this. Oh, yeah, it's, fantastic. it's brilliant, it's fantastic. isn't it? It's brilliant. I mean, Snooker's back in the Middle East. You know, after what is it, Ken? Thirty years. Yeah. You know, it's uh, fantastic to be back. I can't wait to hopefully play myself in that tournament in uh, August. But, you know, what a time to be a snooker player. Yeah, I mean, look, you're just outside the top 16. Is it, is it get, I mean, I know you're going to have a media career one day. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, you and me hopefully together for many years to come, <laughs> weekend, the three. But, I mean, does it make you feel like, yeah. I want to start practicing? No, absolutely. I thought after this week, I, you know, I've got to get back on that practice table and try a bit harder. You know, it's been it's been a um, fantastic few days, but also very inspiring for myself. You know, you, yeah. Yeah. you see how it's done you know at the top of the sport and, and what a fantastic evening tonight's been I feel like it's, yeah. it's gave the tournament the ending it deserved you know you, you were part of a fantastic tournament last weekend in Ireland yeah full house not a spare seat in the crowd look snooker is snooker we want to see it everywhere don't we absolutely and this is a new territory as I said we've been here over 30 years ago in, in Dubai it's great to be back first time of course in Saudi Arabia and, uh, you know, hopefully this is the start of a beautiful relationship and many, many more. Because you can see what it means to the fans. As fans have come, not only from Saudi Arabia, but they've come from all over the Middle East yeah. to watch this guy and watch the other guys play, play snooker. Yeah. And I think that's important as well, you know, to give the fans what they want. Great snooker, great tournament, the best players in the world and a great prize as well. I think, yeah, the, at the end of the day, it's all about entertainment. And this, this last few days has been nothing but pure entertainment. You know, we've had black ball games, people trying to have one, six, sevens, and it, it's just been very entertaining to be involved with. And, and, you know, that's the name of the game at the end of the day. Well, we know for sure that the crowd here certainly enjoyed it. There have been some great games over the last few days. It, it, you know, I'm looking forward to actually digesting them. But you just see these reactions here. Yeah, everyone's bu buzzing, everyone's buzzing, you know, everyone's yeah. had a good time. <laughs> they got to see Ronnie in full flow, which probably at the end of the day is what everyone wants to see. But, you know, there's been so many good games this week. We've been uh, really treated by the players. But, look, sport here.